Get everybody, Dave Brown, along with Corey Macklin here at ringside. We are ready to go with another day of USWA Championship Wrestling. Oh, boy. Hey, good to have you back today. Had Todd Champion here with me last week. Mm. He's in the ring today. Got a big day of USWA Wrestling. Brian Christopher is going to be in here in the opening bout today. Then you see Missouri Tiger Jeff Gaylord and Mean Mike Miller teaming up. Todd Champion, as we said, he's here today. We'll see him in action. Richard Lee and the Moon Dogs are here. Jeff Jarrett and Eddie Gilbert and Doug Gilbert all yeah. teaming up here today. Interesting six-man tag to our exploration of time. Today. Yeah, strange turn of events while I was gone involving oh, Eddie yeah. Gilbert and all that. Looks like a full day of action. We'll be back to get it underway right after this. out here we got uh, Brian Christopher headed to the ring got him scheduled against uh, against Bart Sawyer here today and uh, what should be a great match uh, to get things underway for USWA championship wrestling but before he uh, before he heads to the ring Brian Christopher will be stopping by here oh, I see he comes out all smiles he comes out all smiles and uh, has the belt in his hand and all of that sort of oh, he's very very happy I see after your yes, match this Dave. past week. Yes, Dave, I am extremely happy today. And you know why, we all know why. It's all because Danny Davis is in the unemployment line. That's where he is. See, Danny Davis thought he was a big shot around here. He thought he could come and get in my face, challenge me to a loser leave town. Well, what happened now, Danny Davis, huh? How do you feel sitting at home with no job? You see, that's what happens when people messes with me. You end up at home with no stinking job while I'm out here making all the money. <laughs> but now, now, Dave, it seems, you know, I didn't know Danny Davis had so many friends. I thought he had, I thought he had his, uh, held his fan convention in a telephone booth. You know, he ain't got, nobody likes Danny Davis. Who cares about a star on your face? Not me. But it seems he's got a couple of friends and everybody's been calling me, issuing threats. They've been threatening me on the phone. I've been getting mail, threatening mail. Everywhere I go, sit down at a restaurant, and people are talking behind my back. So what I'm going to tell you what. Now, I'm going to do something that, you know, it's going to cost me a, a few dollars. But, you know, I got the championships. I can spend a little extra cash. What I'm going to do right now is hire somebody to watch my back. Because I can't always watch my back. That's the only way people can get to me is on my back. So what I'm going to do right now is call out somebody to be my personal bodyguard. I want to bring out Jeffrey Howard Gaylord right now. Gaylord for your personal bodyguard, huh? Yes. You see, Dave, I'm an important man. I'm extremely important. And right now, Gaylord, what I want is for whenever I'm in the ring, I want you watching my back. Whenever I'm walking down the hall, I want you watching my back. When I walk into the Coliseum, when I walk anywhere, I want you watching my back. I don't want this Danny Davis getting anybody near me. I don't want anybody near me, you see? No fans, I don't want anybody touching me. You see, Dave, everybody's jealous of me. Y'all can sit over there and smirk and talk, and you can all sit at home and talk all you want. I don't think they're jealous. I think they, they know that uh, your version of what happened is not maybe exactly the way it went. Well, Dave, exactly what happened is, I'm tell you, I got Danny Davis in there, I got him in the ring, and I beat his sticking brains out from corner to corner. I left him in the middle of the ring like a bloody... You see? You watch my back. I had Danny Davis sitting in that ring, a bloody pulp. I beat his brains out, and I asked all the people out in the crowd, I said, stop the match. Please stop the match. Danny's hurt. I said, hey, this is wrestling. People get hurt. So I beat on him some more. Then the referee said, no, stop. Get back. Uh, Danny's hurt, I think. Maybe. Well, then count him out, referee. Come on. So the referee counted him out, and now you're looking at the champion around here. I won the match. Danny's sitting at home. I got me a new bodyguard, and what can you do about it? <laughs> now understand, we got some punk Bart Sawyer. Well, Bart Sawyer, step up in the ring, because you're in there with the champion. Let's see what you can do. Brian Christopher is his new bodyguard. Uh, Jeffrey Howard Gaylord. Jeff Gaylord going to be watching his back. I guess that means he's going to be at ringside here, too. Not, uh, 
not especially a good situation there to have Gaylord here at ringside. Mark Sawyer, I think most wrestling fans are familiar with. Fine wrestler. He's uh, spent a lot of time in the Pacific Northwest. We've seen him in the USWA. And he is back and ready to go against Brian Christopher here in this match. T.D. Steele is going to be the referee. And here's Corey. Thank you, Dave. It's underway. Bart Sawyer and Brian Christopher. Should be a pretty good single body today on championship wrestling. Of course, Christopher, the Texas heavyweight champion and the Southern heavyweight champion. Holding on to two titles and boy, he is some kind of proud today. About getting rid of, he calls it, Nightmare Danny Davis. Leaps over Bart Sawyer and as cocky as ever, there he is with that goofy laugh at all he's got. This guy's incredible. <laughs> Well, he's a he ain't quick enough, he says. <laughs> yeah, tell the hey, watch my back. Brian Christopher tangles up with Bart Sawyer, backs him up against the ropes over there. Clean break there, now. Oh, Christopher kicks him. In the midsection, with Sawyer right into the ropes. Bart goes under, comes back. Ah, uh, going out to Christopher. Christopher and Duck get out of the way of it, and, uh, Nailed Bart Sawyer. There's Bart. He's trying to see what in the world is going on because he hasn't had a chance to get anything going yet in this opening bout here today. No, he hasn't. It's been all Brian Christopher, and Christopher hasn't let him forget it. He, uh, you know, is laughing and uh, celebrating every little move that he makes in there. Uh, Gaylord doing walking behind the curtain here, walking all over the studio. Being the bodyguard for Brian Christopher, he said. Sawyer leaps over him. Comes back under. Eddie Marlin is out to uh, say a word to Jeff Gaylord. I'm sure what he's telling him is you better stay over here in this corner. Uh, yeah, he puts him in a chair. Yeah. Bodyguard or no bodyguard, you can't just go wandering anywhere you want to go. Look at that. Sawyer's got Christopher out of the ring. Christopher gets out of the ring now. <laughs> Bart Sawyer had him going for a moment there. It's just back on the apron, and the fans are giving it to him. Brian Christopher, boy, he's something else. Oh, look at Bart Sawyer. Oh, he flips him right back in the ring and says, hey, come on, let's get it going. And Christopher said, oh, wait a minute now, yeah. Christopher. Hey, Christopher now whips him into the rope. Big elbow from Bart Sawyer. Covers him. He's got a pin cover. Two. Ooh. Christopher out of two. Yeah, he uh, almost had him there. Christopher able to uh, to kick out before the three count, but I thought Sawyer might have it. Oh, I thought it was mighty close in there. Big foot. Big foot uh, foot in there from Brian Christopher. Nails Bart Sawyer, backs him up against the turnbuckle, and uh, goes. Oh, went in after Sawyer and misses that time. Bart Sawyer got out of the way and uh, comes back with the right hands of his own in there on Brian Christopher. Whips Christopher into the turnbuckle. Comes off. Nice backdrop from Bart Sawyer. Takes him down. Bart Sawyer comes in on a... Portland, Oregon. We remember him day when he came in with his partner Doug Masters a time ago, and they were a rugged tag team. And Bart Sawyer wrestling in single two. Close count in there. Wrestling single there now. He's picked up some weight and looks good. In against Brian Christopher in this bout here today. Set Christopher up. Flips him over. Covers him one, two. Christopher kicks out of it at two again in there. I thought that snap suplex might be just enough for him to hold him down, but not to be this time. Oh, reversal here. Sawyer Ooh. comes off with a DDT on Brian Christopher. He pulled their hair. Oh, yeah, I said, hey, referee, he pulled his hair in there. Just a nice move from Bart Sawyer is what it was. Whip Christopher in. Sets him up for a sleeper hold. Holding on to Brian Christopher. And Bart Sawyer looking pretty good in this one now. He's holding on to Brian Christopher. Trying to get him to, to submit to that sleeper hole. Trying to get Gaylord off the uh, ring apron there, too. Gaylord up on the apron where he shouldn't be. And Bart Sawyer takes care of that for him. 
He smacked Gaylord. He goes over and nails Gaylord. Oh, but he turns around and look at Christopher. Pulled a chain out of his tights. Now Sawyer, two, three, he got it. He just clobbered for Sawyer with a chain he pulled out of his tights in there. Now Barney got the one, two, three. And uh, there's Mark Sawyer holding on to uh, his jaw there when Christopher nailed him with that chain and he got the one, two, three. Well, the referee's back was turned trying to uh, get Jeffrey Gaylord down off the ring apron. Christopher seized the opportunity, pulled out the chain and smacked him with it. Now TD, the referee, has talked to uh, Bart Sawyer and Bart has explained what happened. And TD is asking the crowd about it. We could get a reversal here. Yeah. Hey, Christopher, he's trying to explain to uh, referee TD still. Then on uh, no way. Christopher's denying it. He said, no, look, here's what happened. He said, I just hit him and rolled him up. There was nothing illegal about it, sir, I'm sure he said. TD checking with, uh, with the crowd again. And, of course, the crowd telling him what happened. Yeah, he hit him with a chain. TD see the, the ruling. He's, you know, I don't know what TD. TD asking the fans. And they said, hey. Oh, he was about to raise the hand, and all of a sudden, Brian Christopher grabs it. What is this? Gaylord throws the referee out of the ring. Through TD still out on the concrete floor there, and uh, TD says, ring the bell. And let's get some help out here for Mark Sawyer. Yeah, here Pick comes up help. Bill Dundee. Superstar Bill Dundee comes in and gets rid of Christopher and Gaylord in there. And it's good to see the superstar come out and help Bart Sawyer that one. And you even it up at two against two, and it didn't take long for Dundee and Bart Sawyer to clean house and get rid of Brian Christopher and his new bodyguard, Jeff Gaylord. Here's Dundee. Bill, thanks for your help in that right there. Appreciate it. Brian Christopher, let me tell you something, punk. Well, there's no sense standing out here and talking a whole lot of garbage because that's what you're going to think it is anyway. The man was down there last week and had a camera and he filmed it. So if they'll just play the tape back, we can see exactly what happened to Danny Davis and your version is all out the window, punk. So if you'll just press the button or you tell him they will. All right. What? Yeah, let's see the tape Danny Davis against Brian Christopher. Here's what happened. Bill, there's a problem with the tape. The director tells me there's a problem with the tape. I know you've got a uh, got a Southern he uh, heavyweight title match mm -hmm. coming up against him. With Mr. Brian Christopher, we'll just see hey! him. Oh my God! Hey, uh, I think I see what the problem with the tape is. Is that the t is that is that the tape with you against Davis? Hey! Is this what you're looking for? Is this yeah, what you're looking for? that's it. Is this it, Brian If you don't mind, we'll for Danny Davis. Why don't you take it back upstairs and play it so we can all see it, punk? Hey! I done told you what happened, Dundee. Oh, That's come on. For. Look, look. You're ruining the tape. No, all you got to do is look on this tape. You can see what I was talking about. Look, Bill. There's me beating Danny's brains out. There's him. Hey, look. You there's him beat Danny look, look. This look. Oh, there's man. him begging for mercy. You don't believe me, do you? Huh? Look, here's where he's sitting there bloody. He's a bloody pulp right there. Oh, Bill, it's, it's useless. No, We're not going to be able to see it. you're standing there lying is what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing. You couldn't whip Danny Davis. Today, yesterday, or the day after, boy. If you're so bad, why don't you climb up in here now? Hey, 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 hey. hey, come on. We're not. We're gonna need some help for Bill out here. Two against one. Gaylord holding him up while Christopher's ripping his clothes off. What he's doing? Boy, what a guy. Have another guy hold him up so he can work him over. Here comes some help. Here's Bart Sawyer. Boy, these guys are two against one. They just oh, love hard. that. Finally, it evens up. And they're out of here. Bill, my goodness. I don't know what more we might expect from Brian Christopher, but we're going to see the, uh, see the videotape here. Christopher obviously has, has uh, uh, stolen the tape from the tape room, and uh, here it is in pieces, and it will not be viewed because it's ruined now. Hey, punk, let me tell you something, brother. You know exactly what was on this tape, and you couldn't whoop Danny Davis or anybody else in a loser leaves town. You make me sick, boy. Well, there's uh, Phil Dundee and uh, Bart Sawyer. Let's take a break. We'll be back here in just a minute.
talking to Eddie Marlin. I saw you guys talking, well, I, but I couldn't hear you. No scheduled interview, but I had this punk up. Look at my ear, man. He slapped his cauliflower. Eddie Marlin, I need to ask you a favor. And I've asked you a few over the years, and sometimes I got mad at you and done all kinds of things that I shouldn't. But I got a southern title with that idiot that just hired Jeff Gaylord for his back watch or whatever he calls him. Well, let me tell you something, punk. If you got enough guts to sign this match with a superstar, just wander back on out here. We'll change that from a southern title to a lose and leave town, and we'll see how big and bad you are. Because let me tell you, brother, I've done it. I've blooded up the U-Haul, and I've hauled my family all over America, and it ain't very nice. And the pressure on you, brother, is going to be something terrible. Because I've had a few of them lose at least. I don't know how many Danny Davis had, but I know I've had a couple. And I'll beat a few, y'all. Come on, punk. Come on. Oh, watch it. Here he comes. Oh, watch it, Eddie. Him. Here's Gaylord with him, too. I was thinking about it. Because this snot-nosed brat ain't slapping me on television. And you ain't running my friend out of town. And if you got any guts, you'll sign it right now, brother. Lose and leave town. Stop wasting your breath, Dundee. Don't get so, so uptight and hot and, and sweating and getting red in the face. I don't need to sign no lose and leave town. I, I'm a, I don't... What, what do you want to sit at home, huh? You want to go home? You want to sit at home? You like the unemployment line, huh? I like keeping you around to beat on you. I gotta keep just, somebody around here to beat up on, don't I? more time talking. Just right. He's got a contract. Just write the name on it. I don't need to sign nothing. No. Because you're yellow. You're a coward. No, I'm not yellow. I'm not a coward, and you're the liar. No, sir. You are a coward, and you're yellow, and you're a liar. You never know. I'm not yellow. You I'm are yellow. Hey. 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 No, I don't need to sign nothing. And if you wasn't a coward, you wouldn't have hollered that big idiot to stand behind you. Watch my back. You are a punk, like you. Jack, and you are a coward. I don't need to sign no losing leave town, Bill. I'm not scared of it. I'd beat you any day of the week, Sunday. You are yellow and a coward! Well, Loser Leaf Town is what he's signed now. If you got any guts, you'll sign it! But you ain't got no guts, because you're a boy! I have to do a man's job! You can't be me, and you couldn't be anything! Now, Eddie, please don't I'm lose it. Yeah, I'm we'll speak up this week when you're sitting on employment line and that stupid little girlfriend driving you all over. Because I've had to do it, punk. I've had to back up and leave. And I ain't leaving no more. We'll see how crazy you are. got me sitting at home, buddy. Who's the lead sound no right. Been no signed. Shut it down. He's made me mad. He's going to be in unemployment line before this is up with Come on, Day Lord. Well, somebody may be in the unemployment line for it's over with. Superstar against Brian Christopher. And, you know, I've got to say, I, I'm, I'm not sure it was very wise for either one of them, to, anybody, to sign a loser-leave-town yeah. match. I mean, we saw what happened with Danny Davis uh, just, just a week ago, but the match has been signed. Loser uh, will not wrestle in the USWA for a period of time if they lose this match coming up this week. We do have us a match uh, up here right now. Uh, Jeff Gaylord, uh, Christopher's bodyguard, is uh, is going to be wrestling as a tag team partner here with me, Mike Miller, going against uh, Tony right, Williams and, and uh, Danny Shannon here today. Boy, Gaylord, we've seen too much of him already. T.D. Steele, the referee, calls to the bell, and here we go. Yes, sir, underway. Danny Shannon and Tony Williams. The bonus for me, Mike Miller and Jeff Gaylord. Danny Shannon in the ring there now, and Mike Miller slams away on it, whips him into the ropes. Whoa! Nice line pressure there, uh, making part of this. Tony Williams in the ring now. Tony was Mike in. Good drop kick in there from Tony. Nice arm drag. Takes me, Mike Miller, down. A couple of good moves from Tony Williams. Tony looking very good. Gets a tag on his partner. This is our uh, look at Danny Shannon here coming off the middle rope. He goes to work on Mean Mike Miller. Oh, Mike Miller just bobbing him, though. Big forearm for Mean Mike Miller takes him down. They don't call him mean for nothing. Comes in out of Portland, Oregon. And he is a tough specimen of a wrestler. Tags his partner, Jeff Gaylord. Shannon comes off the rope. Jeffrey Howard Gaylord slams him down right to the mat. Big slam from Gaylord. Well, this guy, the strength of Gaylord, let me tell you, he has a lot of it. 
Comes down with a big leg on Danny Shannon. Covers him, two, picks him up. Might have been able to get him for the three count, but picked him up at the last instant. Oh, no doubt about it. He had him. Ah. Reverse neck breaker. Snaps him down. Look at this Gaylord go. Oh, wow. Boy, a big neck breaker from Gaylord. Then a big knee right in the chest of Danny Shannon. He's got his shoulders down. Won't even go for the pitch cover in there, though. Wants to humiliate Shannon in there. Tags me, Mike Miller. Miller comes off. Clobbers Danny Shannon right in the midsection. Mike Miller drops down. He's got it covered now. Two. Boy, he picks him up again. Only gets a two count out of it. Whip Shannon in and... Catches it right in the midsection. Drops down on Danny Shannon. Me, Mike Miller, and Jeffrey Howard Gaylord. Team it up today on USWA Championship Wrestling. Boy, well, stay around, too. Still got a full day of a lot of action. Still to come here today, as always. Uh, Gaylord up on the top row. Referee T.D. Still telling them, hey. Watch it there, Shannon, boy, Gaylord catches him right off that top rope, covers him two, three, he gets it. Gaylord and Miller get the one, two, three over Tony Williams and Danny Shannon. Just all Gaylord and uh, uh, Mike Miller in that one. They were favored coming in. I got show people enough. I'm trying to get a little support around the mid south area. And me and Mr. Gaylord, baby, we're going to take it. We're going to take it to the limit. And anybody gets in our way, brother, we're going to squash you right in the middle of the ring. You, Jeff Jarrett, Jerry Lawler, anybody, step in that ring, brother. We're going to take control. Well, issuing a tag team threat there for Mike Miller and Jeff Gaylord. We'll be back after this. Last week, I know you had to deal with Todd Champion out here yeah. for a good part of the day. And uh, Champion, of course, in a match against the King, Jerry Lawler. Here's some videotape highlights of what happened. Todd Champion comes out with a big leg and misses. Lower <laughs> goes out to Todd Champion, flips him over. Goes to work on Champion. Jeff Darris had cuff to Bert Prentice in ringside. Lower on his feet. Now Champion again. Sends him flat down. Champion. Yeah. And Champion takes Lawler. Slams it right in the referee Paul Neighbors over there. Oh boy, Champion whips him into the wall. Big backdrop on the king. Jerry had it doing there for a moment and said Champion deliberately again threw him right in the referee Paul and Amos. Look at Lawler though. Sets him up for the pile driver. He's got that champion covered. Jeff to the referee Paul and Amos. Hey, come on, ref. What is, what is Paul and Amos doing? Come by the bell. He grabs Lawler and says, no. do an unsportsmanlike thing like that to break the rules. You lose! Boy, I tell you that Burt Prentice with his comment uh, there at, uh, at the end. And the ref, I'm, I don't know about, uh, about all of that. Anyway, here comes the king right here. Let's let him uh, talk about it. He, uh, 
greets the fans on the way over here and we'll get some comments I'm sure about that match and about the match that's uh, coming up here just in the next couple of days. King, we just saw the videotape of exactly what went on. Well, a little bit disappointed because it didn't turn out exactly like I wanted it to. Naturally, I'd love to have left the ring with the Unified World Heavyweight Championship back around my waist. But, you know, everything uh, has its time. We have talked with promoter Eddie Marlin. It looks like I've got another match signed. This week, it's going to be some interesting stipulations that I'm really looking forward to. Todd Champion came out here last week. He took the entire show. He stood out here. He told everybody about his entire background, Dave, and very impressive credentials. Todd Champion, yeah, he went to Utah State University, graduated with honors, he said. Uh, I don't know about that now. But he was drafted by the Los Angeles Rams. He played football there. He went on. He played football with the uh, San Francisco 49ers, and now he's a professional wrestler, and he comes away. He beats Butch Reed for the unified world title, and he's sitting on top of the world. And he loves to come out here, show off all his muscles, that big, beautiful body. But to me, what I see when I look at him is a million-dollar body and a ten-cent brain. Because I'm going to tell you something, Todd Champion. You have signed for these stipulations on this match this week, and I am tickled to death. Just like uh, you saw in the end of the match, the pile driver, the referee disqualified me. Well, we got a return match. The title's on the line, and this week... There is no disqualification. So, Todd Champion, that means, brother, anything goes from the nose to the toes. Second stipulation is... All right. Bert Prentice and Todd Champion arriving here. This is Jerry's interview time, if yeah, you don't mind. Right. Hey, hey, let me finish, fat, fat face, okay? Hey. You mind? Hey, what? Hey, instead of walking out of here, you ought to lay down and roll out here, Jelly Belly. You make better time, you know it? So let me just say this. We got a no disqualification match. You understand what no disqualification means, huh? Let me tell you something, Jerry Lawler. And let me tell all these illiterates out here sitting here this morning on TV. You call yourself a sportsman. You said that I cheated to beat you. You tried to break my neck the other night. And you know what? You couldn't do it. You couldn't beat me. You can't hurt me. You can't do anything. You can take a bulldozer and bring it into that ring, and you can't hurt me. So anything you want to do, I'm happy to do it. And if you don't watch your back, I'm going to sneak up on you, and I'm going to hurt you real, real, real bad. Boy, isn't that something? Here's a big guy. How tall are you anyway, huh? What are you, 6'6", six, 6'7"? Six, six, what are you, 4'6"? No, I'm just asking. Here you are, 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, you probably weigh 275 pounds, and I got to watch my back, right? You're going to have to sneak up on me. You're a real tough champion. Well, let me just tell you, the belt's on the line. No disqualification. No disqualification. Anything goes. The second stipulation is this. Bert Prentice, your big fat manager over there, once again is going to be handcuffed to Jeff Jarrett. Oh, so no. I, oh yeah. Oh, no. oh yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah. No. So I don't have to worry about you interfering. So if I don't have to worry about you interfering, and I don't have to worry about getting disqualified, there's only one other thing that I want, and there's only one other thing that I'm looking forward to, and that is. I don't have anything against Frank Morrell. I don't have anything against Paul Neighbors. They're good guys. Referee is a tough job. But I want a special referee for this match. Is that all right with you? Special referee okay with you? No. We will not agree to that. Wait, wait, no. wait. wait let, me do, let me do some talking here. Just, just, be, just, just be cool. I'll, ha I'll handle it. Trust I'll handle it. Me. Let me tell you something, Jerry Lawler. You can bring anybody out here you want. You can pick one of these illiterates out here to be a referee because all you got to do is count to three to put your back on the mat. That's all. It doesn't matter who you bring. You can bring. Oh, hey, hey, I got no, it under control. Don't worry about it. Trust listen, me. listen. They're listen. crooks. They're crooks. They're cons. They're trouble. I smell a rat. This is not good. Don't do it. Trust me. Hey, look, I don't Bert. like it. I don't like it at all. Please, hey, Todd, don't do it. I understand you smell a rat. Just get a little further away from him and you'll be all right. But let me just say, oh, oh, all you good. said the referee has to do is count to three because there is no disqualification. No, no. And all I'm asking for is just somebody other than Frank Morrell or Paul Neighbors. No. We'll just have a special referee. Is that okay with you? No, no don't do it. Okay? You know, I don't like it. I don't like it. I'll handle it. I said I'll handle it. Please don't do it. I'll handle it. I'm, I'm telling you. Please. Jerry Lawler, you can run around here all you want, call yourself the king, call yourself king what, I don't know. 
but you can bring anybody into that ring you want. It doesn't matter because you can't hurt me. You've already tried to break my neck. You couldn't do it, so it doesn't matter. Actuality, I'm looking forward to kicking your butt all over Memphis. So it's a, it's a deal? No. The sign? Is that okay? Yeah, it's a deal. I'm not afraid of you. What am I afraid of? Hey, you don't have to be afraid of anything. All we got now is a match Monday night at the Coliseum. No disqualification. Burt Prentice handcuffed to Jeff Jarrett. The unified title on the line. And a special referee. We got it? You got a deal, pal. You better show up. Oh, I'll be there with bells on. I'll see you jerks Monday night. There, there it is. It's, it's a I want to go on record. I don't like this. I don't approve of this. I, I just... Okay. No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. He is Jerry a snake. Lawler. snake. Jerry Lawler, just take a good look at the man that's going to end your career. I'm going to end it once and for all. So you just better tighten up those boots, and you better be ready to have the match of your life because it's going to be your last match. Well, what about our stipulation? I mean, he has a stack in his face. Todd, I don't like it. I don't care. I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. He's, a, he's agreed to it. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. And uh, we're going to check the rest of the card right here, shaping up to be a great night coming up at uh, the Memphis Mid-South Coliseum. And here is what you'll see for the opening match. 7.30 is when it all begins. Bart Sawyer will be stepping in here against Mean Mike Miller. Good Bart, opener. Bart looked uh, really good in the match here today until he was hit by a chain yeah. that uh, Brian Christopher pulled out of his tights. Mike Miller against Bart Sawyer in the opener. Jeff Gaylord then will be going against Rick Morton. Should be another excellent single match Monday night at the Coliseum. Miss Texas against Lauren Davenport. This is a ladies' title match. Also, it's a lumberjack strap match, meaning yeah. it's going to be lumberjacks stationed around the ring in that one so that nobody can go running out <laughs> of the ring. Ladies' title will be at stake. Then, boy, this one is a scary match right here because Jeff Jarrett is going against Mike Samples. But look at that. Samples' stock, he's got 20% of the stock against another 20 percent of Eddie, Eddie Marlin. Marlin stock yeah, now we were trying to figure up exactly uh, percentages uh, Eddie uh, if, if he if uh, Jeff loses that's going to give samples uh, controlling interest because Eddie has dropped now from from like uh, 51 percent so that if samples were to win the match he would actually have about 40 percent of the stock and Eddie, and Eddie would have percent. have uh, about uh, I think 31 32 percent something like that so that would give samples control of the thing and uh, that's scary to me. Yeah. Let me tell you, as uh, Jeff will be climbing in there against Mike Samples come Monday night. Then, Brian Christopher goes against Bill Dundee. And Christopher, I don't think he wanted to make it uh, that way. Well, as a matter of fact, I know he didn't, but he ended up being shamed into it by the superstar Bill Dundee. And the match has been signed. It is now going to be a loser leave town match. Indeed. So if Mr. Christopher finds himself pinned Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum, It'll be bye-bye to the USWA for a period of time. Of course, unfortunately for Bill, the uh, same situation, uh, same stipulation applies to him. And as we said earlier, I'm not sure it's very wise for either of them to sign that stipulation. But that's it. Loser leave town. Dundee against Brian Christopher. Moon Dogs with Richard Lee going against, yeah, Doug and Eddie Gilbert, the hitman and hot stuff, together to go against Richard Lee's Moon Dogs. USWA World Tag Titles are going to be at stake. May it a bit of the night. Unified World Heavyweight Title will be at stake. The champion, Todd Champion, boy, he's huge, too. Yeah. Going to be going against the king, Jerry Lawler. And you heard the stipulations just moments ago. Uh, Jeff will be handcuffed to Burt Prentice to keep Prentice out of it. It's no disqualification, and Todd Champion has agreed there will be a special referee. Jerry did not mention who the referee is going to be. But knowing Jerry, he will come up with some very highly qualified individual to referee this match. It's all going to happen Monday night. I don't think you want to miss this one, fans. Monday night, 7.30 at the Mid-South Coliseum. Back with more right here. Young wrestler out of Dyersburg, Tennessee, in the ring right now. Ricky Hayes, he's got his work cut out for him here today, though, because that very large, very tough, unified world champion, Todd Champion, is coming in here, led by Burt Prentice, his manager, who uh, leads him to the ring and points to the opposition and says, there he is. This is a non-title match, but boy, can you imagine if Ricky Hayes can, can just hold his own against Todd Champion. 
That's uh, going to be a feather in his cap, certainly. Oh, this big champion, what a specimen, let me tell you. He obviously, he, uh, well, Prentice, we can uh, handle the commentary. You handle the managing over yeah, there. Yeah, indeed. It, uh, it uh, is, is a situation where you've got Todd Champion, who is uh, definitely an athlete. He is a multi-sport athlete. He obviously works out, stays in great shape. He has the unified belt around his waist, and he is a tough customer, let me oh, tell you. He is. He's letting uh, Ricky Hayes take a look at the belt, but uh, well, he's got a lot of mouth. Let's, too. Yeah, let's uh, let's get the talk over with and get the match underway here. We're waiting for the signal. There it is from TD Steele, the referee. And here we go, Todd Champion against Ricky Hayes. Here's Corey. Thank you, Dave. He calls himself the Patriot. Todd Champion comes in out of uh, Los Angeles, California, the city of angels, and uh, he is a Top customer, as Dave stated, and he's holding that unified world heavyweight title. Ricky Hayes tangles in with him, and boy, he just pushes Ricky, just shoves him back in the corner over there. You know, Dave, sometime during this match, I'd appreciate if the cameras would go on the front row over on the other side of the ring. You'll see Jerry Lawler's children over there on the end. He needs to leave his kids at home. Oh, they look just it. like him. I'd be ashamed. Uh, Bert, I, I, I would like to repeat what I said earlier. We'll handle the commentary over here, if you don't mind. Indeed. Look at Todd Champion, boy. Big guy. He can move. Drops down on Ricky Hayes. Harder. Big elbow on Ricky. Harder. Takes Ricky Hayes, whoops him into the ropes. Big Ooh. power slam on him. My him goodness, down. what a power slam. He just picked him up, held on to him, and just took him right down to the mat. Wow, this guy's strong. Oh, indeed, he is big. Drops down with a leg on Ricky Hayes in there. Boy, he can wrestle, and not only that, he beats some tough people, too. Uh, he comes in, he's in the USWA, he's been all around the world wrestling, and... Uh, as the King stated earlier, he defeated Hacksaw Butch Reed for that unified world title he's got around his waist there now. And about up in Cleveland, Ohio, and boy, he is some kind of tough. In the USWA now, Todd Champion, heard a lot about him, and uh, he's made his way in the USWA, and he's at the top of the hill holding on to the world title. How long? We'll see. As he takes Ricky Hayes, slams him up against the turnbuckle, and just walks him over across the ring, slams him in the other corner. Drops down on poor Ricky Hayes. Boy, it's been all Todd Champion in his mouth. Slams Boy, Ricky you. down. Ricky Hayes had a long, long day here today. Keep in mind, Ricky Hayes is a, is a fine wrestler. We've seen him, seen him really look mighty good at matches around here. He's just being overpowered by someone who is, who is bigger, taller, and who is very, very strong. And that's why he's the world champion. Boy, a flying elbow in there from champion. Pins him one, two, three, and it's over for Ricky Hayes. As top champion, the Patriot, gets the one, two, three, and he is the unified world heavyweight champion. There he is. That's what a real champion looks like. A real champion. We can finally be proud. We have a real champion, and Jerry Lawler is no more. Well, that's the word for Burt Prentice. Todd Champion, certainly a champion uh, wrestler, no doubt about it. I'm impressed with what I just saw. I'd be a lot more impressed if he weren't affiliated with Burt Prentice. You know something? I just now met you, and I just realized one thing. You've got to be the tackiest dresser. I've ever seen. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. This match is coming up involving Mike Samples, and I, I for one, am not happy about it because USWA stock is on the line, Mr. Samples. Before we get into that, I need to correct something that Bert Prentice said a moment ago. Could the camera get a shot of these two? kids at the end of the, the row there. That's not Jerry Lawler's children. No, it isn't. They're, they're Eddie Marlin's grandkids. That's Jeff Jarrett's brother and sister. They look just like Eddie Marlin. See that? Well, can we talk about the match? Sure. Let me tell you, I've been out spending some of my dividend check, you know, 20% of a multi-million dollar company, 
Gives you some money to spend. I've got a nice new outfit here. Things are going good. I've been interviewing prospective radio and television people to come in. I've got some plans to do for radio wrestling. Got some plans to get rid of YouTube clowns. I got a lot of plans. You can see what I've already done, just 20%. I had Jerry Lawler suspended a week or so ago. Danny Davis is gone, right? A little behind the scenes work. I'm taking over. When I get to 40%, the things will change. These idiots will no longer get in free here. They'll pay the ticket prices. I got so many plans. It's going to be great. If, if you get to 40%, here's a man who's determined to see that you don't get to 40%. That's a big if, Dave. I think, Mike, I want you to make sure you realize what you're getting into. If you win, what, he'll have, what, 40%? 40%, and Eddie will be down but to 31. He, but if he loses, how much percent will he have? Zero. That's exactly well, right. Mike Samples, you no, have no, never no, beat no, me. No, you no, never no, will. No, and you and your fat jelly belly right there, the two of you together couldn't get the job done. Put the microphone over here. I'm the person that will have control of this company. What you're going to come do in the ring makes no difference. There's no way that I'm going to let an opportunity to have controlling interest of a multi-million dollar wrestling company slip through my fingers. If you think I'm coming to the ring unprepared, you're yeah, crazy. You know, Mike Samples, you say you're going to get controlling interest. Yeah, and you want to raise. Company. Yeah, you think yeah, you're going to raise ticket it. prices. That's right. Yeah, and you're going to come in and cut the shows down to what once every three months. Just when I feel like it. You got some awful big I'm plans, make a don't you? This yeah. company will make more money. Well, yeah, you more got some money. Awful big plans, don't That's you? Right. Well, let me just tell you something. Lots of plans. There is going to be a big change Monday night. Number one, Bill Dundee is going to be the Southern Heavyweight Champion. Number yeah, two, in his dream. Yeah, Jerry Lawler is going to be the New World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, in his dream That's too. That's right. And number three, not only are you going to have zero percent, but the following week you're going to be buying a ticket to see a wrestling match, and that's a promise. Ooh. Well, there's a, a parting shot for you, Mr. Sample. As Jeff Jarrett leaves, and we have other business, if you don't mind. Thank you, Bert, and thank you, Mike. Corey, let's check the out-of-town action here while he ponders what just happened. Yeah. Hey, going to be an interesting night, Monday night at the Coliseum. Let's check USWA Championship Wrestling around the area. Bolivar, Tennessee, Thursday, November 5th. There at the Bolivar Central High School. The king is be there, Jeff Jarrett. Moondogs, and some family will get a chance to win $50 in cash. No purchase necessary. Following night, November 6th. Hey, also in Bolivar there at 5.30, Jeff Jarrett's going to be at Richard's Barbecue in Bolivar on Thursday at 5.30. Bolivar Championship Wrestling at the high school Friday, November 6th, Bible, Arkansas. National Guard Armory, Rock and Roll Express on the card. Jeff Jarrett will be there. And a fan will get a chance to win $50 in cash. Save a dollar on advance tickets. Hey, no purchase necessary on that uh, $50 gift. A uh, couple of minutes of uh, championship wrestling. Wednesday night, November 11th, Jackson, Tennessee, T.R. White Sportsplex, 7.30 p.m. King will be there. Miss Texas, Todd Champion will be there. Hopefully without that world title, too, and uh, so much of mouth he's got. Lauren Davenport on the card. Many more USWA top stars. You'll see Thursday night, November 12th, Covington, Tennessee, at the National Guard. I'm 7.30 there in Covington. Tickets on sale at Tipton County Bank in Kroger. They would all on events. Tickets to King. Moondogs on the card. Miss Texas. Brian Collins will be there as well. All in Covington, uh, Tennessee Championship Wrestling on Thursday, November 12th. Friday, the 13th. Carruthersville, Miss Missouri. All the USWA top stars there in Carruthersville. Friday, the 20th. Kenneth, Missouri. The American Legion building. All of the top stars in Kenneth. And uh, the following week, Cleveland, Mississippi. 7.30 p.m. Championship Wrestling in Cleveland. Uh, all of the USWA top stars in Cleveland and back in Jonesboro, Arkansas on uh, the 28th of November. I am, all right. I am surrounded here by, by wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, come here, come here, come here. That was so great. When Je Jeff, you slapped the taste out of my sample. Yeah. Yeah. When you get to 20%, so can I do a raise? No, no, anybody. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. Well, let me tell you something, Brian Christopher. I ain't leaving today, tomorrow, or any time. And I'm going to be, where am I going to be first? Going Bolivar, to be in Bolivar, Tennessee? and I'm going to be in Blyville, Blyville Friday. Friday. So, <laughs> Punk, you'll be driving around looking for a new job, and you're going to give me a raise. Thank no, you. Eddie Martin, yeah. <laughs> Just got a few words. Uh, Corey mentioned it earlier. I'm going to be at Richard's Barbecue up there in Bolivar at 530, and some big matches right there at the high school, and then Friday in Blyville. A lot of great USW action coming up. You're exactly right, and you're going to be there, King. You're going to be around the area, too. Oh, I'm going to be everywhere, hopefully, just like Coca-Cola, everywhere, you know what I mean? Uh, I want to mention... I saw on the monitor there up in Jackson, Tennessee. We were up there last night. 
wrestling is going to start taking place every Wednesday night up in Jackson at the T.R. White Sportsplex. Beautiful building, be great facility, and uh, looking forward to being back up there on, I think, November the 11th. Correct. And going to be in Bolivar, Tennessee. That's going to be exciting. First time I've been in Bolivar in a long time up there. And matches coming up all over the place. We're going to be in Blytheville, Arkansas, and uh, Jonesboro. Other, Jonesboro. Jackson. Man, it's going to be great. We're going to be all over. Also wanted to mention, Covington. got my good friend. You know Mr. Ed Allen. Everybody yeah. familiar with the Shriners clans around Memphis knows Ed Allen. Ed's been around Memphis forever, but now he's down in Batesville, Mississippi. And as you can see, a little free plug here. He's Batesville's best pizza down there. And uh, we're going to be down in Batesville tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, Dave, you can keep the rain away from us down there because we got our last softball doubleheader of the year down in baseball to help raise some money down there. Don't we, Ed? Tell us just a little bit about where it's going to be. All right, it's going to be at Trophy Park on Highway 35. The Shrine Clowns will be playing the police department down there. And I guarantee you the chief of police will get a bucket of water over his head. <laughs> and Jay, uh, through the looms, going to be playing your team. And they say they're going to beat the socks off of you. Are you wearing any socks? I got today? socks on. We'll you know, sometimes Jay doesn't wear a sock, so I just wonder if they could beat him. I don't think so. Panola you know, Mills, we'll be taking them on down there. I'd like, to warn, I'd like to warn the police department. I played in a game against the Shrine Clowns once, and they bribed an umpire right in front of everybody. No, so be careful. Don't cheat, Dave. No, no way. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what. You bring these three men with you, and I'll feed them a pizza. <laughs> That sounds good. We're going to be there. We'll see y'all in uh, Jackson, Jonesboro, Blytheville, and Bolivar. Yeah, and tomorrow in Batesville. <laughs> All around the territory. Thank you, guys. And <laughs> sounds like a fun day tomorrow in Batesville coming up, too. Hey, we had some action uh, at, uh, at the uh, Mid-South Coliseum involving the Moondogs, Jerry Lawler, Jeff Jarrett, oh. and Eddie Gilbert. Was it good? Yeah, take a look at this videotape. continues all over the Coliseum area. Eddie Gilbert came in with the top of that trash can. Moondog Spike takes Lawler, slams him over on top of that table. Slams Jerry right into it. Meanwhile, Jeff Jarrett got the king killer cover. Moondog Spike. Slams away at the king killer. Jerry goes over and picks up that top to that can again and slams the moon dog with it. Whoa, whoa, what wild USWA wrestling action. Lauren Gilbert got both of the moon dogs. Oh! And they slam Lauren Gilbert right smack dab into each other. Oh, Eddie Gilbert was fired. With that big play going to King Killer. Jabs him right in the throat. Jared pins him two, three, they got it. Well, Jared and Gilbert get the win in 901. This thing cleared up in now. Moondog's got that big plank. Slams away at Eddie Gilbert with it. And it's me, Mike Miller, under that mask of the king killer. Well, let Mr. Samples ponder this, and we'll ponder the fact that the Moondogs will be here when we return. Stay with us. Mike Lewis and Don Kelly, give them credit, ladies and gentlemen, for even climbing into the ring because here come the Moondogs, led by Richard Lee, the whistleblowing manager, and 
I'm going to show these people something today, Dave Brown. Everybody asked me, Richard Lee, how do you make your moon dog so mean, baby? I'm going to show you what a moon dog whipping post is all about today, baby. There they go, into the ring. Richard Lee sends them in. And they just jump. Spike and uh, Don Kelly, Spike Lewis and Don Kelly. Yeah, they throw Don out of the ring over there. Moon dog Spike got Spike Lewis. Spot comes off the middle rope, slams on it. One, two, three. They get the one, two, three. That's it. The and match is over. over. So yep. Richard Lee, you want to just collect the moon dogs and go on back to the dressing room. Oh, oh Spike boy. Lewis thrown over the top rope. So now both uh, Lewis and Don Kelly have been thrown out of the ring. Oh, what is Richard out. Lee doing? They pick him up. He's what are they got, doing? They're tying him up. Got a rope over there, yeah. Oh, come on, Richard. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, let's don't do that stuff out here. Oh, uh, look at this. Oh, it's hey. Eddie and Doug Gilbert. Oh, boy. And the moon dog, and they're trying to attack Spike Lewis. Eddie Gilbert and Doug Gilbert. Come into the area. They brought some hardware of their own, and they go to work against these moon dogs. Boy, oh, everything Gilbert is flying. beating up on this one over here with a metal sign, while Doug Gilbert is going against the other one. Richard Lee blowing the whistle. He wants the moon dogs to leave. They can't leave. It's tied up over here. Boy, what action out here! Oh, watch it. Go out. Now the curtain over there. Man, oh man, you talk about a brawl. Eddie and Doug Gilbert come out and jump on Lee and the Moon Dog. Eddie Gilbert, Mel and Moon Dog Spike in there. Ooh, oh. Doug Gilbert just got nailed with that no parking sign. Spot and Richard Doug, Lee again now. trying to get him out of here, but he can't. He's got the uh, he's got the world tag title belts in his hand. But the Gilberts are really going after the Moon Dogs. Now one of them's got Doug Gilbert. Look out! But yeah. he's, Doug got him by the hair, and they're they're fighting their way out of here. And oh, boy. there they go. Boy, I tell you, a lot they still in the area out there. They have, as, as usual, left us a mess here. But this time it was really the Gilberts that did the most damage. Not the moon dog. Here comes Doug back, and here comes Eddie. Jay Brown, let me tell you one thing, boy. You might beat on me, and you might break my nose. This ain't dancing, and it will never be. Let me tell you one thing, boys. You had rather walk through hell than you had mess with a Gilbert. Eddie, you tell them what we're going to do to them. Dave. I want everyone. Doug, come here. Doug. Hey, watch it. Watch look it. out, look out. There they come. There they go again. Got the free for all going again here. Oh, boy. Action all over. The Moon Dogs didn't learn their lesson very well the first time. It's the Gilberts with the folding metal chairs. And once again, Richard Lee says, Let's go. He takes them out of here. The Gilberts have run them out of here once again. Hey. When Doug, when Doug was a little boy, when Doug was a little bitty boy, show him when I was a little boy, show him what she used to do to me, show him, show him. When Doug would come home, when three or four boys would jump in, when he'd come home to Big Brother, I would look at Doug and I would say, go get him, go get him, Doug, go get him, and we're going to kill some Doug. take a break and we'll be back right after this. The Splash Casino in Tuna. Oh, here we are back again. We're still regrouping, fans. We lost a chair there. One of the chairs destroyed. Oh, no, no. Here comes Richard Lee of the Moondogs again. 
and you had your say before the match, I would have thought to Gilbert, Brown, I've got a whole bunch I want to say, and I'm going to say it to Eddie and Doug Gilbert. Boys, remember one thing. We rode a lot of miles down that highway together. Eddie Gilbert, day after day, night after night, you'd watch my dogs go to the ring, and you'd look at me and later on and say, Richard Lee, I've got one thing to say, brother. I'm glad it's them and not me. Well, now, what you did, Eddie Gilbert, would you let that punk brother of yours get you in a lot of hot water? You came out here just a few minutes ago and tried to impress these people with slapping Doug Gilbert. Well, you told your story, but your story was every time the boys beat up Doug, you'd come home and beat him up. Well, you're not messing with boys now. You're messing with two men. You're messing with the two toughest men in professional wrestling. You're messing with the World Tag Team Champions, baby. And so come Monday night, come hell or high water, Eddie and Doug Gilbert, I'm going to end your career. I don't care. Boys, we used to be friends. It's water under the bridge. The water's all gone, and you're going to be gone come Monday night, boys. Mark my word. Well, that's where it'll be settled, but I tell you what, from watching here today, Richard Lee, if I were you, I'd be mighty worried because it looks to me like the Gilberts cleaned house not once but twice here today for you and your moon dog let's take a look at the complete card coming up monday night 7 30 at the mid-south coliseum opening match bart sawyer against me mike miller jeff gaylord against rick morton this texas against lauren davenport in this one the ladies title will be on the line it's a lumberjack strap match lumberjacks will be stationed around the ring jeff jarrett against mike samples Mike Samples, 20% against another 20% of Eddie Marlin's stock. Jeff Jarrett trying to win the match to give Eddie Marlin back his complete amount of stock that Samples has won from him. So Jeff is wrestling to win that stock back for Eddie Marlin. Samples wants it, so he would then have controlling interest. Then Brian Christopher against Bill Dundee. Southern heavyweight titles on the line, and the loser leaves town. Ben, you got the moon dog. Tell these people to take a good look at Doug and Ed Gilbert's picture right here. Because this is the last time you're ever going to see these boys look normal. It's going to be Doug and Eddie Gilbert going against the moon dog. World tag titles will be on the line. Then the unified world heavyweight championship match. You've got the king challenging for the belt. The champion is Todd Champion. It's all Monday night, 7.30, Mid-South Coliseum. We'll be back after this. Right here in the ring in just a moment. First, got a match coming up later in the week, though. Lauren Davenport going to be going against Miss Texas, and the ladies' title is going to be at stake in that particular match. And uh, here comes Lauren Davenport right here, who's requested just a moment to uh, have a couple of words about the match. Jay Brown, every week I come out here, Miss Texas wants to come out here and get in my face and take up my interview time. So I just want to invite the little sleazy tramp to come on out here right now. Come on out here, Miss Texas. Well, and maybe the thing to do is just wait and have the match and settle it, and you just say what you want. I want to get her out here right now. She's back there watching. I want to get her out here right now, Dave. Come on out here, Miss Texas. I guess a little coward scared to come out here. Is that the problem? I don't even know if she's here, to tell you the truth. It's I... like every week in our matches, the only thing that saves her butt is running in and out of that ring, jumping in and out. Well, this week, Dave, she's not going to be able to because we got lumberjacks around the ring, and they're going to have big black straps. And Miss Texas, every time you jump out of that ring, one of those men are going to slap you so hard with that belt, you're going to have strap marks on you for weeks. Well, that applies to both. I mean, you both have to stay in the ring there, and the title is at stake. I'm going to be taking that title home with me, Dave Brown. All right, well, that's the word from Lauren Davenport. And again, I say it'll be settled in the ring, in the ring. And uh, in the ring right now, as a matter of fact, we are just about set to go with this match. I see Mike Samples has, uh, has arrived with uh, a couple of folks. Mr. Clyde is with him. And across the way, yeah, here comes Jeff and the Gilberts back out here. And I notice Eddie is keeping that uh, big red folding metal chair handy. He's got the Moon Dog's name written on that chair right now. Yeah, that's, he's, that's the Moon Dog uh, used to write their opponent's name uh, on, on the chair. And look, Moon Dogs, it says. 
Well, we're about set to go here. Six-man tag team action. I'm looking forward to it. Anytime you got a six-man match, the, uh, the uh, action tends to get very fast and furious. In the ring, looks like Doug Gilbert's going to be starting for his team. Who's going to be starting across the way? Uh, the masked man is going to climb in. That's the uh, Blue Knight. Eddie Gilbert screaming for the Moondogs. The Moondogs. Well, the Moondogs not here right now. Look at this. Doug Gilbert jumps. The Blue Knight over in the corner doesn't even wait for the referee to finish all the instructions and everything. So TD says, ring the bell, and here we go. Look at Doug Gilbert. Oh, yeah, Doug. Oh, picked up the Blue Knight. Oh, what a big suplex. Held him up in the air for a long period of time. Drops down with a big leg on him. Hit man Doug Gilbert. Boy, he is rugged. Let me tell you, don't underestimate him. And Richard Lee and his Bulldogs better not either. DDT on the Blue Knight in there. Tag on Eddie Gilbert. Gilbert and Jeff Jarrett teaming out to the expiration of time here today. Boy, Eddie just slams away on the Blue Knight. Hudson takes the Blue Knight and slams it right into Jeff. Tag on Jeff Jarrett. Jeff whips the Blue Knight into the road. Big back left on the Blue Knight. Takes him down to the mat. He dropped the Blue Knight about seven and a half feet straight down to the mat, and the Knight finally makes it over and gets the tag on Mr. Clyde. Jeff Clyde! <laughs> Grabs the hold of Mr. Clyde, whips him into the ropes over that. Clyde jumps off and catches a big elbow from Jarrett. Boy, Doug Gibbard hasn't even taken that T-shirt off in there. He just went to work ever since he came out of here. Some kind of fear is an upset he has. The moon dogs broke his nose for what happened in that last bout he had. Against him. Takes Mr. Clyde and boy, boy. Just slings him out. Look at Eddie Gilbert. He's got that metal chair over there. Nails Mr. Clyde with it. <laughs> Trying to get Mr. Clyde on his feet over there. And just shoves him in the ring. Doug nails away at Mr. Clyde, sends him down the right hand. Jeff Jarrett holding the chair up over there. Eddie Gilbert distracted the referee. He talked about the Blue Knight. He said, hey, he's out of his corner, referee. And when Petey turned, and he ran uh, Mr. Clyde into the chair that Jeff was holding over in the other corner. Look at Doug Gilbert, just walking on his head. Yeah, just standing right on top of Mr. Clyde over there. Uh, Eddie Gilbert is kind of sneaking around the studio here. I don't know yeah, I don't know what he's exactly doing. what's going on. Meanwhile, Jeff and Doug seem to be taking care of things. Oh, he sneaks up behind oh, the Blue Knight. Close it. Look out. Take the Blue Knight and destroy him. Oh, boy. And the Blue Knight just minding his own business, really, in the corner, all of a sudden is victimized by hot stuff Eddie Gilbert. I think he walked the Blue Knight up there. I tell you what, uh, the Gilberts are on the uh, other side of the ring, and I know they got Jeff as their partner, but they, they still have those wrestling tactics that they've become famous for. Yeah, Eddie and Doug are upset. Boy, they are furious. They're really upset, not so much at these guys, of course, as they are upset at the Moondog. And that's pretty much what they're focused on. And anybody that gets in their way between now and the time they see the Moondog in a match again is just in some serious trouble. And that's the case here. By the way, speaking of that, I noticed that Mr. Samples is not climbing into the ring. No, not at all. He's, he's directing traffic over there. Looks like a crossing guard, but he's not climbing into the action. Doug, Doug rolls Mr. Clyde over. One, two, three, they got him. Doug Gilbert, Eddie Gilbert and Jeff Starr get the one, two, three. And Eddie, Eddie out getting the fans into it. He was sitting out there in the crowd for a moment out there. <laughs> there he is, hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert. This one is history. The victory goes to the Gilberts, Doug and Eddie and their partner, Jeff Jarrett. And I tell you what, Make no mistake about it, Moondog. 
you got a rough night coming up when you step into the ring against Doug and Eddie the next time around. We're going to be back with more right after this. See in South Carolina coming up on the SEC Game of the Week immediately following us. We hope you'll be joining us next week. We also hope you'll join us Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Look at this card. 7.30 is when it starts. Mike Miller goes against Bart Sawyer in the opener. Jeff Gaylord against Rick Morton. Miss Texas against Lauren Davenport. And the ladies' titles on the line. And also lumberjacks around the ring to keep the wrestlers in the ring and not down on the floor. Then Jeff Jarrett going against Mike Samples. Sample stock, 20% of the USWA stock against another 20% of Eddie Marlin stock. Jeff trying to win the match so that Eddie gets all of his stock back and the 51% control. And Samples, of course, has quite an attitude, but Jeff Jarrett oh, today, I think, found the answer right there Whoa. for that attitude. Yeah. Then Brian Christopher is going to be going against Bill Dundee. This was to be a USWA Southern Heavyweight title match. Still is, but you add to it the stipulation, loser is not the champion but the loser also has to leave town. Wow. USWA World Tag Titles on the line then. The Moondogs oh, and Richard Lee against Doug and Eddie Gilbert. After what I've seen here today, I'm not sure but what I've got to consider Doug and Eddie Jeez. the favorites as they go into the ring. Look, Look at, at this. There's Doug Gilbert breaking a crutch, and there's uh, Eddie Gilbert with all of the uh, hardware that they brought in here, and they ended up running the Moondogs out of here not once but twice. Look out, Moondogs. The Gilberts coming at you. Then the unified world title is going to be on the line. Todd Champion, the new champion, he's a tough, rugged-looking athlete. I was impressed in the match I saw here today. He will be going against Jerry Lawler, and the belt will be at stake. Big night. Oh, yeah, big night. 7.30 Monday night. Big day here today. Another one coming up next week. We hope you'll